Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to this live stream worship by Grace Presbyterian ECO. My name is Chuck Hastie. I'm the pastor. We welcome you to this, uh, this Lord's Day, and we say Happy Mother's Day on this Lord's Day. And let us be called to worship by these words from the letter to the Philippians in the second chapter, chapter where Paul writes, "...have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus." who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient, even unto death and death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us worship God. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, Father God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this day that you have set apart for the worship of your holy name. Thank you for this opportunity that we can come to you through the, the miracle of technology and, and media. And we ask that you would bless not only our worship through this means, but all your houses of worship that proclaim Jesus as Lord who are doing something similar, have done, are doing, will do today, that your word would go out And it would not return void, but it would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And Father God, today we lift up a prayer for unity, for we are eaten up with pride and prejudice. And Father, we are also eaten up with fear. And fear has no place in the life of faith, for your perfect love casts out fear. And so give us your Holy Spirit, a spirit of love and wisdom and strength and obedience and trust in you that as we live and pray and work, that it would be for unity of your body. For Father, we do find ourselves divided politically, racially, economically, and in so many other ways. Father, unify us as one. Unify us in your church, in Grace Church, in the churches of Columbus, in the churches of the state of Georgia, in the churches across our great nation, And the worldwide church, Father, may we stand as one on the foundation of Jesus Christ, in whom there is neither Jew nor Greek, in whom there is neither slave nor free, male or female, black or white, rich or poor, Democrat or Republican. In you, Father, we are all one in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, make us one in Him to serve you and praise you today and all of our days. We pray in His holy, precious, and powerful name, the crucified and the risen one. Amen and amen. So again, welcome. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I have just a few announcements. Um, I want you to stay with us all the way to the end of this broadcast because we have an exceptional treat for you. We have been asking for pictures of mothers to be sent in, and boy, have you. And uh, I pray that we've gotten all the pictures that were sent to us. I pray that all the names are correct, but we're asking for a little grace, but you are going to be so blessed. Uh, Ryan Clement sent me the video this morning so that Sam Hall and I could preview it. And I wondered if I should watch it or not, but I went ahead and I did. And I tell you, I cried. (laughs) I cried tears of joy and tears of gratitude. You are too, I I guarantee it, as you see this beautiful thing um, that that God has, has put together as we honor mothers today. So stay tuned to the end of the broadcast. That's number one. The second thing I want to ask you to do is pray for our session. We meet tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. We're gathering again for the sole purpose at a called meeting to again prayerfully consider our steps forward and how we will be reopening the church as the community, as our state, as our nation uh, opens back up uh, wisely, safely, faithfully. So please pray for the session as they gather tomorrow evening. And then finally, I want to remind you of uh, the the exciting thing that's going to happen on Wednesday of this week, May 13th. Gather at the Little White House. It's located at 160 Double Churches Road. Come about 1045. 
10.45 in the morning, and we are going to assemble our cars into a parade. We're going to drive the short distance up the road to, Riv to Britain uh, Drive, and we're going to drive through our construction site. We're going to blow horns. We're going to have posters that say thank you. We're going to have gift bags, a lunch box for these faithful and talented workmen that have been working so faithfully day in and day out on the house of worship that God is constructing and giving to us. So we want you to be part of that thank you parade and, uh, and gather at the little White House. We'll be in our cars, we'll be safe, and, and it'll be a great day of celebration. And speaking of thank you parades, I thought it would be appropriate to, uh, to offer thanks to those who are in this space, who make this uh, broadcast possible. Um, I gave them a heads up. I, w I wasn't going to just pull them up. Now they're tucking in shirts. Sam Hall said he hadn't had his shirt tucked in in seven weeks. Ryan's trying to fix his hair. You've seen Kathy, and we're so grateful to Kathy, and say thank you to her for being here and playing every Sunday. This is our eighth Sunday um, of, of live streaming, and, and uh, we're, we're getting a little better at it. But I want to pause right now, and I want to ask these gentlemen to come up, and Larry Henry. Larry, you've already been in one of these videos when you blew out our birthday candles. Come on up here. We want to say thank you to you. I'm, I'm going to give you an elbow bump. We might get closer than six feet, but we love you. And thank you for, uh, for all that you do for our church and for being here uh, each week and making sure that our environment is safe and protected and that you're getting what we need. I'm so grateful. Thank you. God bless you. And I love that hat you're wearing. All right. Um, let's, get, let's get Sam Hall to come up here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sam, come on up here. Don't trip over anything. All right. We want to say thank you to Sam Hall. Sam has been here every week as well. And mask, mask and the masked man. And, and it, I just can't thank you enough for the way that you serve. You're an elder, and uh, you've been faithfully serving these past eight Sundays. We love you. We appreciate you. You've got, a, you've got a background in all this stuff. Radio, TV, you know all about it, and you're still using those gifts for us. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for all you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, and uh, last but not least, uh, a new face to some of you, uh, but um, kind of the mastermind, the man behind the curtain. This is Ryan Clements, and uh, I hope you saw Larry's Georgia hat, because today Ryan has on his Georgia Tech mask, and uh, we'll let him do that since it's balancing out here a little bit. But Ryan, we can't thank you enough. My pleasure. Your, uh, your willingness to serve in this way is just such a gift, and we are so very grateful. I know that there are thank yous, and there better be thank yous scrolling up and down the screen here, uh, just showering these people with gratitude uh, for what they're doing for us. So thank you. We, we love you, and we appreciate you. Now, Ryan is not only helping us in these broadcasts, but Ryan has been on the journey with us from day one and is our project manager, manager as part of the uh, Aaron Clements uh, and Associates firm that, that is our, uh, our project manager. So we're so grateful in many ways. So those are the announcements. Um, and uh, we got, we got uh, fun to do this week. So... Uh, be there Wednesday, and let's thank those those workmen. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna lift up our prayers of confession. That's uh, what we do in our liturgy as we go through an order of worship. And so, let us be reminded: if we claim that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us go to the throne of grace with our prayers of confession, both spoken and then in silence. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, our sins are too heavy to carry. They are too real to hide and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change, and open us by your grace to a future that can be changed. And grant us grace today and in the days to come to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Let us offer up now our prayers in silence as we speak to our loving Father. Let us pray.
Father, these and all of our prayers we lift to you for you alone are the one who hears and answers our prayers. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do by your great grace and sovereign care. In the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. And friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in glory for us. And Christ prays for us. All who are in Christ are a new creation. The old way is past. It's gone. And behold, in Him our lives begin fresh and new. Friends, hear and believe this good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. And Jesus said, My peace I give you. My peace I leave unto you. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Pass the peace of Christ with your brothers and your sisters. Let's, uh, let's communicate in this way, this, uh, this amazing miracle of technology. Let, let's see our gratitude. Let's share the peace. And let it be a fresh beginning for this week to come. you all. And peace be to mothers today as we celebrate them. We're going to lift up a prayer for our mothers, then we're going to read scripture, hear the word proclaimed. So would you pray with me please? It's a prayer for our mothers. Join your hearts and your minds together. Dear Father, we approach your throne on behalf of mothers whom you have entrusted with the care of your most precious little ones. And we thank you for creating each mother with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice that each mother gives for her children, for the late nights spent rocking a colicky infant, for the hands calloused from washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, baking, stirring, hugging, patting, disciplining, holding, writing, erasing, painting, and pouring, and so much more. We thank you for the gift of time that mothers give for their children whether it's a, the stay-at-home mom or working moms or mothers who have some combination of the two, we thank you for the flexibility of mothers and their tirelessness, their perseverance, and their devotion. And we pray you give each mother strength. Help her to see in every mundane task the eternal cosmic significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical, world-changing events may be happening anonymously in her home. Help her to give those who undermine her significance forgiveness. And we especially pray for single moms who must lean solely on you for the fathering of their children. And we thank you that your big arms surround children who may never know their earthly father. We also pray for mothers who have never physically born children, but for those whose nurturing extends to the many in their care and cross the threshold of their lives and whose love and influence has been the love of a mother. And we ask you to be the daily bread of tired mothers. We ask you to be their living water. We ask you to be their source of spiritual and physical strength. We pray that the same grace that flowed from the Father to the Son and to us in salvation will flow from mothers to their children. And we pray that each mother rejects per perfectionism and instead embraces the goodness and the grace of the gospel. And we pray the rhythms of repentance and forgiveness will shape every home. And Lord, give each mother a worshipful reverence of you 
the Creator and the Sustainer of life. Help each mother to rest in the knowledge that they are but stewards of your children and that only your Spirit can produce change into the hearts of each young boy and girl. And may each mother find rest in you. May she know that there is no way to be a perfect mother, but there are millions of ways to be a good one. And most of all, Lord, on this day in which we honor mothers, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us and nurtured us and who have prayed for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you who formed and knitted us each in our mother's womb. In the name of your Son, Jesus, who knew the love of his earthly mother, we do pray. Amen and amen. And now may the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of His Holy Word as it comes to us this morning first from the Old Testament. This is from the book of Deuteronomy in the sixth chapter. These are familiar words. They are known as the Shema. The first part is known as the Shema, the Hear, O Israel. That is uh, the, the bedrock, the core of, of the Jewish faith and our Judeo-Christian faith. So hear what the writer of Deuteronomy says as he exclaims, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to the New Testament, to Paul's second letter to Timothy, his protege. Uh, uh, one that he called his child, his own son, whom he instructed and, and raised up in the faith. And um, this, is, this is the second uh, epistle that we have from the Apostle Paul to Timothy with instructions. I'm going to begin with the first verse of uh, the first chapter and read through the seventh verse. Continue to listen to God's Word. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience, as did my fathers, when I remember you constantly in my prayers. As I remember your tears, I long night and day to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. Hence I remind you to kindle the gift that is within you through the laying on of my hands, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. John Wesley is the founder, uh, credited with founding the, the, the Methodist Church, that uh, great denomination in, in the family of, of uh, the, the body of Christ. And here's what John Wesley said. I, I love this quote. I learned more about Christianity from my mother than from all the theologians in England. A similar sentiment may be expressed by you, that you learned the faith. You learned more about following Jesus from your mother than you did from anyone else. I can say that it's true for me. It is certainly true for me. I think it's also true for a gentleman named Robert Wolgamuth, who has written a book entitled The Most Important Place on Earth. And the subtitle is this what a Christian home looks like, and how to build one. 
At the beginning of his book that puts the Christian home at the center of teaching, the foundation, the the launching pad for imparting faith and sharing faith, at the beginning of his book, he, he tells a story uh, about living in Glenview, a suburb of Chicago, and mentions that his family home was located in Wheaton, which is about 50 miles away. He says that uh, in the summer, particularly in August, that thunderstorms were a standard fare. And on this one particular August afternoon, a thunderstorm with a gray blanket covered the sky with the, the thunder clapping and, and lightning striking. It was, it was, they needed no weatherman to say it was a 100% chance of rain. But this particular storm that he, that he remembers was, was not so uh, impressive by the thunder or the lightning, but by the sheer volume of the rain that fell hour upon hour it came down, raining cats, dogs, buckets. It didn't seem that it would end. His mother's home, his mother was a home alone, the father was away out of town, and and, and their, their family home in Wheaton was caught in the vortex of this summer storm. Unknown to Robert Wolgamuth, he did know that his father was out of town, but his mother there alone in the home watched the water rise higher and higher. Finally, she called her son, another son living close by, who was only a few minutes away, and so her son Ken, he dropped everything. And by the time he got to the home, the the water was up the driveway and lapping at the steps of the front door of the house. And so he parked at the neighbor's house and ran to his mother's home. Robert's mother was very relieved to have a man in the house And so she asked him if he would be willing to go down into the basement to make sure that that there was no water seeping in and and, and that, that that the lower level of the house was safe. So Ken went down the basement stairs and yelled up to his mother, It looks okay! Everything's... And, fi- and his voice stopped abrupt- abruptly as a wall of water came rushing down the basement stairs, almost knocking him back into the basement space. He, 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 he struggled mightily up through the torrent, a virtual river flooding against him, and made his way to the, to the first level. And he said, we will have to call Dad. And just then there was a clap of thunder as the lightning struck and the phone lines went dead and the house went black. The yard was beginning to look like a small lake. And in the dark evening hours, they could make out Robert's mother, a silhouette of a man, a strange imposing figure there at the front door who entered the house without knocking. And so... Uh, his voice rang out, Get out of this house! Get out of this house! This is a flood! And lightning shocked the sky again, and there was a clap of thunder. At about that moment, my mother, Robert said, lifted her face and her hands to heaven, and she said, Precious Heavenly Father, you know that I love you, he said. Precious Heavenly Father, she prayed in a loud, resolute, confident voice, Please stop this rain! And the neighbor neighbor man, standing in the entryway to the house, stalled in amazement, as if a giant spigot had been turned off. The rain stopped. Nothing was left of the raucous storm but stillness. In the darkness, Robert's brother saw the man's eyes widen as though he had seen a vision, and he exclaimed, You are an amazing woman. And he turned and walked out of the house. Such is the power of of a praying mother. And such is the importance of the Christian home.
Let me ask you this question this morning. Who taught you the power of prayer? Who is it that imparted to you the truth of the gospel? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we read this morning the importance of imparting the faith in the home. It's underscored in these instructions from the Pentateuch, the earliest writings of the Bible. And and the faith is to be imparted at the hearth, around the table, at bedtime, not only by the mother, but primarily. And And the words we read this morning are, And you shall write these words upon your heart, and teach them to your children diligently. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up when you're helping with homework, when you're running the carpool, when you're cooking the meal. Mothers have the perfect positioning for imparting and teaching the faith at these seemingly mundane pivot points of life. The second lesson that we read this morning, Paul remembers the faith that was imparted to his protege, Timothy. A sincere faith that Paul remembered first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother, and I am sure, he said, dwells in you. Timothy was taught the faith by his mother and his grandmother. Who taught you the power of prayer? Who taught you the truth of the gospel? In my growing up home, it was primarily my mother. Although I have a father who is a pastor... And I listened to his preaching. I I, I gleaned wisdom and influence from his life. But at the core, it was my mother. Those intimate moments, the daily watching her live and listening to her pray. For my girls, if they are asked this question, who taught you how to pray? Who imparted you, to you the truth of the gospel? I guarantee you they won't say first that it was me, but they will point to their mother because such has been the case in our blessed home. A woman of prayer, a woman of faith, a woman of wisdom. I want you to um, think with me about what it is that, that mothers impart or that we are called to impart in this life of following Jesus Christ about being persistent in prayer, about knowing and teaching the truth of the gospel. I want to give you just four simple words. They're rhyming words and they're the essence of the Christian faith upon which the follower of Jesus Christ builds their lives. So let's hear the four words, and maybe we can remember them and teach them to others. The first word is this, wrought. W-R-O-U-G-H-T, wrought. You were wrought. It's an old English word. It's derived from the word which means work. It means to be carefully crafted, fashioned, even hammered like metal being worked, wrought iron. You were wrought by God. You were fashioned and made by God. You were created from the earth and given the breath of life by the Creator of all. You were made in God's image, male and female. In God's image, He made us. And God saw all that He made and said, It is very good. We must tell our children who it is that made them and how he feels about his creation, that we are made in the image of God and that we are made good. Let me share with you uh, verses from Psalm 139 that so beautifully remind us of who it is that is our maker. Psalm 139, beginning with verse 13, listen. The psalmist exclaims, For thou didst knit my inward parts. Thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise thee, for thou art fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are thy works. For thou thou knowest me right well. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. 
Thy eyes beheld my unformed substance. In thy book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are thy thoughts, O God. How vast the sum of them. He wrought us in the depths of the earth, knit us together in our mother's womb. And from Jeremiah, I didn't know I was going to have to do a sword drill this morning. But from Jeremiah, listen to these words from the first chapter. As the Lord calls this great prophet, he says, Before I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. The Lord knew Jeremiah before he was even born. He consecrated and appointed a purpose for his life before he was even called to be. How vast the sum of God's thoughts for us. How wonderful is His love toward us. He wrought us. We are of value. We are pleasing to God. We are loved. But we all mess up. We know if we would continue the story from from Genesis, made in the image of God, male and female, but we know that soon thereafter, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They sinned. And we need to know that we have all sinned. That if God should count iniquities, none of us would be able to stand. We need to teach our children that, that there is a right way and there is a wrong way and teach them the ways of the Lord which are right and good. And that when we get lost... There is a God who comes looking for us. God came looking for Adam and Eve when they disobeyed. And He found them in the cool of the evening hiding from Him. In the same way, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the shepherd knows his sheep. And the shepherd will leave the ninety-nine to seek out the one. Jesus is the hound of heaven. I remember the story of Hosea the prophet who time and time and time again was, he was told first by God to marry Gomer although she was a prostitute and was unfaithful. And each time that she was unfaithful to Homer, he was told by God, go back and retrieve her to yourself. Go back and retrieve her to yourself. And in the same manner, God does so with us. The God who wrought us and made us and loves us will not leave or forsake us even when we mess up. And this brings us to the word that we are sought by God. We are wrought. And when we mess up, we are sought by God. He searches us and seeks us out and finds us when we are lost. My mother had to tell me the difference between right and wrong. She just didn't love everything that I did. I got disciplined. I keep in this third grade Bible from Northminster Presbyterian Church in Macon, Georgia. I keep this little letter that my mother wrote to me when I was, gosh, into my 20s, I'm embarrassed to say. And on the front of this little letter it says, To Charles... Hasty Jr. And then she has written A S I W I A W P E F A F T. And what does that mean? A son in whom I am well pleased, except for a few things. Ryan, can we can we zoom in on this? I, I want y'all to see this. See, this is what we can do on TV. Can you zoom in on it? Oh, there it is. A son in whom I am well pleased, except for a few things. And I'm not going to read you the contents of this letter because she says, Chuck, I'm writing you this letter because I love you. But we've got to get a few things straight. And she goes and lists those things out for me. She told me there was a right way and a wrong way. Yet she still loved me and sought me out. There's a beautiful song that is, that is a contemporary Christian song that um, you may hear on the radio these days. It's called Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. Some of the words of this song say this, Oh, you have been so kind to me, and oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. 
Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. And the Lord seeks after us. You are sought by the one who made you. And when he finds us, and oh yes, he will find us, and he will not relent until he does. When he finds us, he then pays the price to ransom us from our sin. He pays the price to get us back, for there is a penalty for sin, and we are told that it is death. And he has sought us, and he has brought us, and bought us with his own life by the spilling of his precious and perfect blood. It is by his grace that we are forgiven. And it is a free gift. Jesus Christ bought us and paid the penalty for our sin. You know, we've had some time, all of us, to go through what we needed to get rid of. And there's a lot of uh, decluttering and spring cleaning that continues to go on. And one of the things that I found in some of my own old papers, and I don't give it away, is this document right here. Now, you may have to zoom in again. I'm keeping these guys on their toes. This is a citation that was left on my Um, windshield when I was the pastor at First Presbyterian Church. And I'm going to admit that I strayed. I was wrong. I got a couple of parking tickets. And so I parked down on First Avenue in a convenient spot, or at least I thought it was. And, uh, And I walked out to find not only this on my windshield, but I had a boot on the front tire of my car. One of those neon lime or orange boots. It was there for the whole world to see. It was so embarrassing. My sin was not only before me, but before the whole world. And so I was instructed that I had to go down and and pay my fine. But my friends, by the time I got there to pay my fine, I found out that someone in the church had shown grace and had pity on me and paid $140 to get that awful boot taken off of my car. So by the time I got back, the boot was gone and I was free. I was forgiven. The price had been paid in full. I was was free. And Jesus does the same for us, my friends. There's a boot on our lives and we are hindered by sin. But Jesus Christ has, has bought us. And He has paid the sin. On the cross He said, Telestai is the Greek word. It is finished. And what that means is, it is complete. It is paid in full. In 1 Timothy, in the second chapter, the sixth verse, he writes, There is one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus, who gave Himself as a ransom for all people. He purchased us. You are not your own, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, but you were bought with a price. And it was the gift of Jesus' life for you. And so you have been wrought. You have been sought in your waywardness. And when found, you have been bought and purchased back for God. And finally, there then is naught. That means nothing. N-A-U-G-H-T. There is naught. There is nothing that can separate you from His love. Let me ask you this. Would you ever try to take babies away from a mother bear? Or would you ever try to harm the child of a mother? You do not want to mess with mother. You do not want to mess with our loving God. Because there is nothing that can separate us from His love. He says, you are my child. You are mine. I love you. And nothing can separate you from my love. My sheep know my voice. They follow me. They shall never perish. And no one shall snatch them. No one and nothing. There is naught that can take them from my hand. And Paul says, I am convinced of this, 
There is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Nothing, no one, naught. And so, my friends, my brothers and my sisters, be reminded of these truths of the Gospels in four simple words. You were wrought. You were made by God who loves you. You were sought. When you messed up, the Lord sought you out, chased you down, and found you because of His great love. And then you were bought by His great grace and the gift of Jesus Christ, the ultimate price paid in full. And then there is naught that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My friends, this is the truth. This is the gospel. This is the good news. And I love what the Apostle John says in his third little letter. No chapters, just verses. And in that third letter, in the fourth verse, he says this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And I believe that is not only true for the Apostle John, but for our mothers and for our Father who loves us. Who taught you this truth? Are you following and walking in this truth? And to whom are you going to tell and show this truth today and in the days to come? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for those who have taught us the faith. And thank You for mothers who impart Your truth. Thank You for their love, their faithfulness, their devotion that reminds us of who You are, Father. But we praise You today as we remember mothers. We praise You today. For You are the perfect one. You are the, the loving one. You are the everlasting one. You are the gracious one. And Father, it's our joy to know You and love You and serve You. So bless all mothers today and bless those that you have put in our care. And Father, bless each home that we may be a center of love and teaching and sending and strengthening for the church and for the world beyond as we share the good news of the gospel. In the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Stay tuned. You're going to see um, this beautiful video uh, presentation. But uh, I've been singing on the, the morning devotionals on Facebook, if you've been following those. And I just felt like I wanted to sing today as part of the charge. And, um, and then we'll give the benediction. And then stay tuned for this beautiful video and have a blessed week. So Kathy, if you'll help me, I'll uh, sing a couple of verses of this hymn. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom heaven and earth adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Amen and amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you and lift up the light of His countenance to shine upon you and give you peace and all God's children peace today and forevermore. Amen and amen.